The Commonwealth got handed the initiative again by the Germans. And the tricky thing that, I'm that I was trying to express at the end of the last video, this circumstance here, there are some dumps in here, but I don't think it's enough to supply, in general supply, all of the Axis units that are there. Not absolutely positive. But if I seal it off, I force the Germans to have to move. The problem is any kind of sealing off is going to take quite a bit of British force where they might not be able to support each other the way that both sides can at this moment. It's kind of the opposite of what the Germans could have done, maybe cutting off the Bardia uh, entry. And they tried to, but didn't really manage to pocket things sufficiently, in part because Tobruk's an unlimited supply source. You can't cut it off. Uh, the Germans are not in that position, though. They're sitting on top of some dumps. Taking out a couple of these over here uh, would reduce their supply situation. But also, what's in here would start deteriorating if the Germans don't launch an attack. And it's going to deteriorate if they do launch an attack even more quickly, but they might be able to bust out and... <clears throat> try to get home, well, homeward. The problem is it's a high-risk maneuver. And I, I look at the British force and I say, wow, they're not going to be able to defend a perimeter around here. And they may end up losing to Brook if they try it. So I can't quite do that. And then beyond that, I'm looking at attacks on stacks like this. This has like 25 strength points. That's, you know, I'd only be able to hit it from this one hex and this one at a third the strength because of those ridges. Over here, we're looking at a much smaller force, around 16 strength points that could access if I hit from just this hex. If I add this hex, then additional forces can come into play and it all gets ugly again. So, I don't know if I can... I think what I'm going to try to do is inch my way over with the attack on here and get myself in better and better position towards making that closing uh, of the loop. I've got more troops coming in again, a couple more good armor, well, just one there, but then the replacement that I built there. So this isn't all that I have to play with, and I have more troops coming in as the turns progress. So it'll be easier and easier for me to actually uh, proceed with that attack. Of course, at some point or another, the Germans just have to say, enough's enough, I can't hold the Tobruk line. Nothing to do with this. They might be able to hold against that indefinitely, but because of the torch landings coming up. Uh, when exactly that happens, I don't know. It's basically a question in my mind, how much of a surprise is Torch going to be? And, and what effect does it have? In fact, in some ways, the better you do on the Desert Fox map, for example, if I was all the way back here tying things down and Torch happened over there, that's a much longer run. So, you know, the worse you do in the Grand Campaign, the better that you ha have progressed and held on the Desert Fox map. That doesn't change my view, though, that I should try to do as well as I can in this game before I proceed to that one. Uh, trying to play just the Trail of the Fox Victory Conditions, which is what the combined campaign is supposed to do, without taking into account some sort of uh, prior goal on the Desert Fox map to hold that territory as long as possible, skews both the results of the campaign but it uh, and the whole manner in which you play the game. Uh, so they don't really work together the way you'd want. What I'm kind of thinking here is there should be something, you know, uh, the the Red Sash games have this kind of idea of you got to succeed somewhere and you can take your success there and that is added in points wise somehow into a success somewhere else or they're compared. So in those games, you know, especially a lesser wrath where you have uh, if you're playing that in conjunction with the Summer Squalls, you really are playing two games at once. In a sense, I'm playing two games here, one after the other, and this one just gives me my position for the Trail of the Fox. But I should be trying to do as well as I can on this one first. 
uh, similar, the Lincoln's War that I'm just looking at has this kind of, okay, if you're playing it in, in four players, you split the two sides, the Union and Confederates, and in three, you just split the Confederates into a political faction who's trying to do certain things politically and a military faction that's trying to do things militarily, and they may not have the same goals. In general, they, they want the same thing, but uh, just this sort of metagame overlaying what was an attempt at creating uh, some kind of very simple victory conditions for the campaign game that I don't think provide the right experience. Lots of chatter there. All right, let's see what I can do with the bread. And the Axis took the challenge again, and we're again pushed back. They probably shouldn't have fought it. Now, at this point, they've got basically two options. One, to try to search for a weakness, preferably over in these new stack. And this is quite powerful, and this, well, it can be supported very easily. So, uh, chances are the, the more reasonable option is to start pulling out of that little salient there and that may involve destroying myself uh, I've got a dump here I lost my dump there and I'm just gonna have to start the, the withdrawal and, and and the slow fighting back across the Jablokta okay and the German pullback is quite easy I actually used the supply dump here to get rid of the disruption thereby not really losing anything to do so I'm mobilizing some of my dumps so that I can slowly pull out. I don't know, uh, the next victory point space is Derna, and that's actually a nice defensive location. If I can hold uh, the Jebel Akhtar for a while, uh, that'll help, I don't know, something. <laughs> it doesn't help my chances of victory over there. It's not going to, you know, it, it'll reduce my loss on this map if I can hold it to the end of the game. Uh, but we're already beginning to see uh, units coming in for the Italians that are from uh, trail. So, you know, the, the time's starting to uh, show there. This is sort of a part of a rear guard, but we really do have to, uh, to push out. Now, we're going to look at the reinforcements here. The big axis reinforcement turn is turn two, which in, in this game. This is to give you an idea of the historical, uh, which is the December turn over here. And I believe that is the last turn of the game here. So essentially the full withdrawal from the Desert Fox map occurs before the end of the game. <laughs> Rommel is not trying to win this game at that point anymore. And it's one of the problems with Desert Fox itself. You can't just say, okay, you know, December 42, that is, you know, that's the time you want to assess where you are on the map. Because the truth is, before that, Rommel has decided to swing uh, into, into, towards Tunisia, and given that situation, well, it doesn't really make sense to judge the game at the last turn of the game. I'm not sure where to do it, but certainly it's not yet, and clearly the Germans have, have lost on this map. Well, uh, the Brits gave the uh, Germans, the Axis, a chance to slip away, and they took it. They've pulled over another little kind of unwieldy formation but they can spread it out a little bit they got some dumps in the background here in order to uh, just try to give a little bit more space force force the allies uh, or the commonwealth forces uh, to maybe take another risk uh, a more dangerous position just giving up that terrain as slowly as i can in particular I view that holding Derna and Benghazi is of some importance, not to winning the game, but to acquitting oneself a little better on the Libya map. Uh, we're looking at seven, eight victory points, really, which is pretty much what I had 
up at this line. So if I can hold that until say uh, October, I feel pretty good about what I've done here in terms of say, you know, the overall effect isn't that much greater than what historically happened in terms of the effect on the war. But in terms of, you know, the glory of Rommel or whatever, and, and any of his legend, it's not too impressive. <laughs> he might well have been sacked at this point, uh, which is fine. I've diverted one of the... Uh, Trail of the Fox reinforcement comes in here. That could be used to help the withdrawal, but I've got plenty of troops right now to let myself slowly out of uh, the eastern segment of Libya here and, and to get me eventually to the El Aguila line. At that point, I have to think real hard uh, as to what I want to hold. Now, Somewhere or another, uh, there's something that makes these important. Oh, these these are the victory points or whatever for this game. Then I think the uh, the entry hexes or ports of importance for the axis to hold. And as soon as all of those have been taken, trail is over. Which means, you know, if I can hold things up here and here and then at the river lines with minimal force, if I can slow the advance of the 8th Army, as it were, at the same time that I prevent the torch landings from taking too much of an effect, that's a very, very good position to be in. Oh. I have to still read up trail of the fox before I can be sure what I'm trying to do there but I don't want to commit too much to trying to win that game while I'm still trying not to lose this one completely. English rather than taking on this German position which is very strong uh, I have no idea how I would assault it or instead using the fact that there's a lot of desert out there here you know it gets tight down here and it's very important to be in the Tobruk area but once I have enough defenses for Tobruk itself, I can just cut down, and I got one little unit heading down this way. That's enough to be a threat, especially since I have backup units down here that can swing in. I can grab uh, this, which is pretty unimportant, but the important thing is trying to cut off El Aguila. That means nothing comes in. <laughs> um, that's a total loss on the Libya map, and then I could concentrate on destroying this position. As it stands, I don't see how the Germans can really hold this position, although they could stretch it out and try to defend over here in this weaker desert. Uh, the problem, of course, is if they get beaten in this race for El Aguila here, uh, they could end up completely cut off. So. I don't know how much value there is to trying to prevent the Brits from cutting through here. Presumably off map here is going to be more uh, desert sea as it were, which is pretty much, uh, you know, you're, you're unable to move through that. Now over here you've got something that looks the same color, but that's just rough terrain. That's the same as the darker rough over here. Uh, there is no more desert sea there. There is nothing impassable there, although some of the mountains may be. And I don't know if there are escarpments. No, the mountains are fine. Chot. I'm assuming that's... I don't know what that is. <laughs> it looks like a lake with that blue coloring. Whatever it is, it's nasty and you can't go through it. Um, the desert sea, the sand sea is actually not, but it's not really mobile for, uh, the mobile units can't really operate in it. So, although there seems to be a movement point allowance for that, generally I just stay away from it. So I'm not quite sure what the effect of that is. Anyway, got some hard decisions to make uh, for the Germans. I have 
to do my refits for the Brits and they've got some forward fortifications. I've stripped the fortifications from back here. They're not going to be in play. Yeah, there's no way the Germans are going to get towards Alexandria at this point. We are midway through uh, the Commonwealth turn in July. And the Axis got themselves in trouble, mainly by not bringing a truck along that they could turn into a dump. Uh, they, they went forward to kind of threaten that single regiment that went out there. Well, now I've sent, you know, uh, essentially a, a, an armored division down there to handle what they sent. And I'm going to have good odds and be able to surround it. I have so much truck capacity <coughs> that I can get supply pretty much wherever I want in the open desert. So, you know, I'm getting around the bulge here and that's going to force the Germans to flee uh, kind of willy-nilly back to El Aguil, I think. We'll see how this turns out. I haven't, uh, I'm only halfway through. I've got the motorized movement next, but I had to position myself here so that they don't get to fall back further or do something else. That was a high enough roll, got like a five on the, the die roll or something, put it up in here, uh, up to the 11 table and with four shifts that destroyed everything because of the out of supply there down to three morale on the other side of things well this isn't such a good table we got a result against the uh, commonwealth but they don't actually they can ignore it because the hex was eliminated and now i've got to start setting up my supply route for the attack on El Aguila. And the Germans have a real, they have to race back there. They've just been defeated basically on this map completely. And I'll throw a couple of dumps. Uh, that one can't be there, but I don't have to advance. A um, couple of dumps into place back here, because I think this is where the attack is really gonna be taking place. I'm going to be sending some forces up that way, but for the most part, yeah, the, the German position's untenable now. Um, and I have potential refit points. By the, it, it, that force was half destroyed. Some of it went into the refit box. Some of it's in the permanently destroyed force. Uh, some of it's limping back, trying to get back together. But basically, I think we're done on this map. It's just a matter of pulling the axis out of there. Let me uh, refit some units. I have some infantry, I think, that are damaged, and that's about it. Long-term damage. <laughs> we got a, a lot of damaged infantry back that had gone into the temporary withdrawal. It's kind of cool when you can put damaged units in there. It's only the original strength that matters. So if you have the original unit, it has to go in there. But otherwise, you replace units with the same original strength. Uh, armor's the only exception where you can substitute pretty much anything. Had the Commonwealth gotten the initiative, they could have taken El Aguila, which is the automatic victory conditions, plus it really would have screwed the supply so, uh, situation for the Germans. It also would force me to try to figure out <coughs> where the hell the reinforcements come in for the Germans. Uh, I don't think Trail of the Fox adequately has rules covering what happens. It's got sort of this, hey, the fight just continues on if El Aguila falls, but I don't think it really covers what happens with the Desert Fox reinforcements, which would still be shipping in. El Aguila is no port. Uh, these troops are coming in through Tripoli, which is well handled in Africa uh, through off-map boxes, but here it's not clearly uh, obvious just where the troops come. I would probably keep bringing them in over on this map in some sense or another. Maybe say that the disruption of El Aguila forces them to come in as far back as Tripoli, which is really sufficient uh, to protect Tripoli, but not necessarily to help you know, destroy the Commonwealth forces here with some sort of surprise move. Hey, they start here, bang. <laughs> That would uh, disturb me to some extent. Anyway, the Axis got the first move. They're actually bringing some of their Trail of the Fox reinforcement, well, one, in to help defend Al Aguila. They pulled back one of their 
divisions, I'm going to call it, I don't know what, um, one of their stacks, uh, and all the infantry is making its way back. I'm also converting uh, dumps over to mobile supply units, and I'm planning on pulling back slowly. Uh, I've got a bit of a problem in terms of supply, but not tremendous. I'm right at the barrier here. This is still a fairly sturdy position, but not like it was, which means the huge quantity of Commonwealth troops sitting here might be able to do something against it. Could I have just picked up, pulled up stakes and left? Yeah, I could have. Um, to an extent, I'm trying to give a head start to the supply units and let them get out of there a little more safely. <coughs> I'm holding pretty good defensive terrain here, either rough or fortified territory. And again, I still want to delay the Brits as much as I can. This is just... This has nothing to do with victory conditions in, in either game, really. But, well, it has something to do with the Desert Fox victory conditions, because all my victory points are up here. Except for this thing. But uh, it has more to do with just a general feeling that I ought to present some sort of as much resistance as I possibly can. Uh, rather than, you know, ah, oh, geez, yeah, I can come in with a only a minor loss by holding these territories. Although that is a factor there. Uh, at some point, though, within the next couple turns, I do have to get out of there. Just as a matter of, in order to, uh, uh, in any sense, be in a position to win Trail of the Fox, these troops can't end up stranded here. And some of the troops are going to have to go over that way towards Tunisia. That's just the nature of Trail of the Fox, is that, yeah, some of the forces are going to be holding this off, but the majority of the Axis troops are the ones in Trail, are the ones that come in on this map. And, you know, I shouldn't... So here's where it gets tricky, because to win Trail of the Fox, I probably want those German troops right over on the, uh, the Tunisian border so that they can stream in as soon as torch happens. Well, I, don't, I shouldn't know the torch is happening. And in order to present something that's at all like the Trail of the Fox game itself, which I don't know if I've ever played all by itself. I should sometime. Um, the... I can't just, you know, split my forces, use half of it to hold El Aguila and the other half up there to prepare for an intercept on an invasion that I don't even know is happening. Lots of options for the Brits. First, I had to correct a flaw in the German or Axis line here. I thought there were two units stacked here. There was just a one stacking point of uh, foot infantry. And that could be infiltrated, so this whole side of the line could have been collapsed. So I fixed that because, you know, errors like that, when I make them, they're why the game is <laughs> as skewed as it is in some ways. But, you know, when I can catch it and see it, obviously, and can fix it very easily, I'd, I'd rather do that than further destroy what's going to happen over there. So the next thing I looked at was, well, the first thing I looked at was, can I attack and, you know, I got these thoughts of sort of a head-on assault against all these positions because it's got to be all of them. You hit just one and the other units uh, can come forward. You also can't get units surrounded or cut off without activating some of these others. So I could hit, you know, the side of this. And what's that going to do? Well, the unit's going to withdraw. It might be disrupted. Ooh, nothing big happened there. You can't pin someone down that way. So, well, if I want to capture, say, these two, if I want to be in these two hexes or these two hexes, I'm going to activate some of these units, <clears throat> which means they can come in and throw my odds completely to hell. Um, any kind of attack on this, except head-on in its very powerful position, is also going to activate everything. So, you know, get this kind of vague thought of, well, what if I just assault the crap out of it? You know, I can afford to take losses, but I'm not so sure the Germans can. And that's a thought. 
Uh, my next thought obviously was over on this line and that's when I noticed the defect. But then another thought, actually my, uh, was these infantry out here. <coughs> Most particularly this one. Now I may be able to hit this in the second motorized phase. I can't get it in the first. I looked at a forced march. I actually even rolled the forced marches. But I can't get a supply unit into play. Oh, wait, forced march, you can't move next to something. Um, you could end up back here or something. But I couldn't get a supply unit into place. So what I'm going to have to do is kind of a two-turn, a, a two-movement pulse action. I do like the idea of destroying these Italian infantry and setting up a position cutting off uh, the main German force. So that's going to be my goal and things are going to get pretty exciting I think during that. All because I didn't want to withdraw, right? <laughs> so after the motorized phase, and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to manage this safely, but I've gotten some more trucks into place that will allow me to make an attack. These guys have launched an attack on this. That's going to cost me this dump um, in terms of supply. And I've kind of stretched my line out a little further. Now this presents some opportunities. The Germans could launch an attack, say, over here on the end or something like that. The problem is they've got other problems. They've got an army to, to rescue here. Uh, so, you know, taking out some little force that's not well defended could well mean the loss of this entire group. It may, I'm pretty sure, it's more important for them to try to get this back as quickly as they can. But as of right now, we've got one attack wrench ratcheting against this unit. Um, <clears throat> it's hard to tell how much air support the Germans want to put into this. They could do some damage if they do so, but if they strip they can only spend four. You can only get four column shifts, uh, and they have no artillery or anything like that, so they can spend all four. But this is not a terribly valuable unit. It's one of those big Italian divisions. Uh, I think the British are kind of counting that the Germans will just let it die, but causing some extra damage might be worthwhile, although the Brits have a decent number of refit points, so even if they take damage, they can rebuild some of the units. Here's something that was interesting. So it, remember how um, the armor enhancement works. Well, the Brits have things like this, and they just withdrew one with ancient tanks on them. Now this unit probably was supposed to have been destroyed, but they just withdrew the first army armored unit, which is also ancient tank. So I'm not going to fiddle around with it too much. The point though is they permanently lost a, uh, a number of armored units that probably could have been enhanced somehow. I just don't know what to do to enhance this one. Do I replace it with one of those dead unit that did get replaced? It, it, it's an issue that isn't such a big deal if you're just playing Desert Fox because obviously that first armored army uh, was present historically until its withdrawal date. Otherwise, they wouldn't have put a withdrawal for that specific unit, right? Um, but this other, this other slow-moving ancient tanks probably would have been available to be refitted uh, before the Tunisia campaign. And to tell you the truth, the first armored it's probably the simple fact that it was always necessary, that it never had a chance to be pulled out and refitted. So really all of the armor should have the option that you should be able to refit it. It's not that big a deal, um, but it does mean that I have some slower moving, weaker armor that doesn't get upgraded. The big thing for me is that it creates this kind of dissonance in my head that says, whoa, that just doesn't seem right. I'm building an exposed supply line, and who knows what that's going to mean. Uh, there are more Axis forces, a lot more Axis forces coming into play. I'm pretending I don't know about them, but uh, there could be a significant counter strike coming in this direction to try to uh, give some aid to the escape of the uh, pocket here. There's 
a lot of British supply just lying around in various forms. I've converted some of it to dumps because I need those forward dumps. I don't expect that they'll all be captured, <laughs> but I'm counting on some of them. You know, as it is, I'm using more than the Desert Fox uh, counter mix. The entirety of both counter mixes in terms of uh, Commonwealth supply was already on the map. So I have kind of a problem that I have to lose some, not for any real reason, except that you're not actually limited by counter mix in these, I don't think. Maybe I'm in mistaken about that. In which case I shouldn't be playing with this many for uh, this map, but I think you're not. And, uh, but I don't want to create lots of supply markers. Now I have, some little counters that I could use for them. But uh, what, I, what I'm intending to do is pretty much saying, look, you know, I have such an excess of supply here that I can just start stripping them off here and using them uh, for the landings, which don't use a lot of supply and don't receive a lot, if I recall correctly. But uh, just eat my excess. But all the better if I end up losing some for real purposes, which includes throwing lots of supply out so that uh, the Germans can't take it all. Uh, my hope is that everything will be in supply next turn. It looks likely, uh, but I could see if the Germans, say, went for a strike down the middle with these pieces and up, uh, there might be some problems. And that could bag a couple of pieces. So we'll see whether the Germans can do something exciting here uh, and whether taking out three Italian divisions ends up costing the Brits something significant. And like I said, this line has been weakened tremendously, but who the hell cares at this point? Uh, the Germans aren't going to be able to take Tobruk and they sure as hell have to get out very soon. The Axis side of the turn, it looks like they're saving their pieces. Uh, well, maybe. They launched an attack around Beta Fram from both directions, really, and against two British unit uh, stacks that were there. Got them surrounded, wiped them out. We got a couple of units in the refit box, but everything else is just dead. And now I've got an additional question on my mind, uh, which is, can I hold kind of this triangular position on Jebelak? are. And to the extent that I can, can I extend to an attack down here? I'd like to wipe these pieces out too. I'd like to do some serious damage to the Brits and I have a lot of forces in the general salient, but I have to keep this connection. Very go-like thinking here again. I have to keep this connection to my pieces, otherwise they can get cut off. Um, Thinking of this game as Go helps me in a lot of ways to understanding the strategy of it. I know I'm terrible at it. Uh, not so much the strategy, but the tactical uh, play of the game. Trying to create good shapes, etc. It tends to fall into place. So things like this, this is just exposed. So, you know, if I could take this out, taking some of this out would be cool too. And then could I take some of this? There's nothing really here. Uh, these are just weak pieces. Well, no, I don't have enough force to take it all, but I can probably cut a significant chunk of uh, Commonwealth troops off. They extended themselves too far on their uh, push forward. Now the Germans managed to take out what really is the cream of the, the English army there. Uh, some of the, the key armor units, etc. There's still more here, but we chopped off some really good units. There's still a couple armor back here that are uh, powerful, and there may be hell to pay for this. This position is a little stretched out, but it's a lot more defensible than what the English had done. They charged forward too fast. It was almost like a Saladin-type situation with the Germans falling back, the Axis falling back, where they tricked the, the English into a bad position. Now, for the Germans, they're giving up most of Jebel Akhtar, in particular Derna up here. Uh, this was the only way they could make it happen. <laughs> uh, I needed to tighten my line a little bit, and even so, there's a big opening here to the Benghazi area, and uh, this is a little weaker than maybe I'd like, but 
the power of the English army is over here. This was the couple of stacks that were taken were the fighting capabilities of that uh, vanguard there. Come back to the English in a little bit. And take a look at the death pile. And I start pulling the Axis units out because they don't count for anything. You don't even have to really keep them in there. I just do it kind of for show. Uh, the English you do need because you need the reference of, hey, is it is this unit that's supposed to come in um, one that came in before? But to tell you the truth, there are no more asterisk results here either, which means I don't really need to keep track of these either. I can just bag them all. Um, hmm. I may need to be careful because there may be reinforcements that I'm not. Yeah, I don't think there's any any relationship between the reinforcements that come in on the Tunisia landing and what happened on this map. Uh, if any units were destroyed on this map, they might come back, uh, even if they were permanently destroyed. It's just an indication of resources that would have been available for the invasion, no matter what. I mean, it's not like I didn't withdraw things when I was supposed to. I, I took no passes on the withdrawals. Uh, I've had to do that sometimes, but this game went very strongly for, for, the, uh, for the Commonwealth right from the beginning. Could the Germans have pushed further down here? Yeah, they could have. Uh, this stack did a lot of overruns mainly supply overruns, but it did do two overruns against one stack. Uh, armored Cav ran away, couldn't run far enough. Well, it ran away with a truck, couldn't run far enough, and got hammered uh, with a second overrun, which is something that happens here. Uh, by doing those, I really didn't have a lot of excess strength. I had this unit. This is about all I had. Uh, let me get that artillery up to the front too. This is kind of weak, but do you really want to try going in there? If you do, you're going to be within range of things that can exploit. So uh, the German position is not as tenuous as maybe a first view would kind of see, you know, these big gaps here. Those big gaps still have some reactive capability. You'd have to put yourself behind German lines and get destroyed to uh, launch an attack here. Germans gave up the uh, fortifications here. Uh, I can pretty much probably clear out all of the stuff off this map too, in addition to what I cleared off of this map. But we'll just keep going. We're building up a new line here near El Aguila, uh, Mersa Braga. Basically the idea being, look, if we can hold them off here, this is pretty decent terrain. There's more decent terrain here but I'd rather give it a little at a time and then commit some portion of my force to head up here because at this point, um, I'm not sure how aware uh, the Germans are of Torch, but at some point or another, you're starting to say, you know, I really ought to cover Tripoli uh, because the US is in the war because everything is vulnerable. I'm not going to send a huge force there to begin with, but I may send a somewhat more of a garrison than I've got there, which is this guy who I didn't move. And I probably should get up to Tripoli. Alrighty. Well, on to the Commonwealth turn uh, for this little piece. It's not just the English making blunders at this point. No question the Germans made blunders before, but... They managed to cut off this little force, and there's no uh, dump under there. There's just a truck. <sighs> I want to get my supply out, right? So my thinking is always, oh, I got the dumps in the back. They supply me. But movement is so quick in this game that, well, they got caught by surprise, essentially. It's going to be a pretty ugly fight for them there. Maybe some of them will survive. Uh, worst comes to worst. There are a lot of German refit points left. There aren't a lot of... Well, there's a decent number of Commonwealth refit points, too. There's a lot to rebuild, though, now. Let's see how this goes. This is on the second movement phase. Uh, I couldn't get enough... I couldn't get enough force and or supply in place. Meanwhile, 
the English along here have something of a defensive line. Uh, I don't know if it's strong enough. Germans might be able to knock out the southern part of that. Uh, basically over here is pretty weak and then over here we're looking at infantry, foot, foot troops that uh, aren't going to be able to react so I can move right around the back here and everything. So I might be able to isolate this whole section. This is the kind of fluid war that the game... <sighs> so I don't know what... I enjoy this more. But it's based on the other person making mistakes, I think. Uh, the other side of it turns into this... Oh, really static game. If both players are very careful and cautious, nothing gets lost and any attack is senseless. It becomes almost a World War I type of situation. I like where it's fluid and active and where pieces get destroyed, but something in me is bothered by my incompetence being revealed, especially when I play it on video. <laughs> this is a pretty key battle, but it's ending up as a three to one. These guys withdrew from an overrun. A three to one, and I can pull these out and attack the truck alone. Uh, I miscounted. I thought I had it numbered correctly. I maybe could have gotten more troops in, but I'm not sure. Uh, there were 37 when you count the four point penalty for the anti-air. I'm gonna recount just to make sure, because I really thought I had four to one, and three to one is over here in the mountains. At least it gets me past the hump, the, uh, the by as it were, but I'd really like the extra column shift if I can get it. I've got a lot of column shifts. I got enough artillery there and it's all in supply. Uh, lots of trucks heading stuff back that I verified, of course. I verified that I had enough strength points to get four to one too, so I may be wrong about that as well. I'll be back. Unfortunately, we're just on column four to begin with. Now, the Axis is going to throw four planes in. I don't have to throw anything in for the Allies. But this is the only use the Axis have for their planes at this point. Because the English aren't attacking anywhere else. We know it because it's the motorized movement phase. So, we're going to be on column four. We get the die roll. This one's important enough. Okay, that puts us to an eight. Both sides have four shifts, though. Uh, so the attacker is going to take some losses, but the defender, out of supply as he is, has got some serious problems here. Looks like we got ones and twos mainly. So there may be something left there. We're not seeing any big Ds. That'd be kind of nice. There was only one elite unit there, uh, one morale, and uh, it actually got destroyed. Last chance of being destroyed, but uh, it got permanently destroyed and is over there. That's my panzers. I'm running low on good stuff here as I am fighting over key areas, I guess. But uh, that, that's a real pity. That's something I would have really liked to rebuild. Uh, <laughs> and it sucks to have that bagged. All right, we hit the refit phase and there's... Oh, I forgot to take the English losses. They were down on... Uh, here, they took a retreat, which they don't have to take. They took a disorder, which they're going to have to... Uh, I don't think they have to kill a dump, because I think this trace is back to Tobruk. Uh, but they do take a, a, a partial, which means the Germans get to damage one unit. And then I've got to convert frontline trucks to dumps and rear dumps to trucks so that I can continue this on uh, forward motion. That's always an aspect of this game. Unlike... Uh, Unlike with OCS, where you're primarily concerned with transporting individual supply points, this is actually more of a headache. Uh, just, I don't know. Maintaining this net, especially when you're trying to keep the units from... Uh, you keep trying to keep your dumps from depleting. So you're, you're trying to balance out your numbers overall. In general, with the OCS, you can say, eh, you know... 10 supply points is enough for that force. <laughs> you know, I, I, I can estimate it and I can throw enough. It's much harder here. You're usually cutting the wire a lot thinner uh, just in terms of really, really looking at the situation and saying, 
Oh, if I send exactly this many strength, first of all, you know the exact strength points of yourself and your enemies, so you can try to measure out if you don't screw up like I did. Uh, try to measure out what table you're going to be on, at least as your core. And then you know exactly how many strength points uh, you can supply. The problem is, unlike OCS, where you're just worried about, eh, i got to get supply points in the general region, and I'll have more than I need. You know, uh, that's always the goal. Now, this is, of course, a, a game where, uh, a campaign where supply was notoriously tight, at least for the Germans, uh, and, well, the Axis during, uh, throughout the whole thing, uh, to maintain an offensive. The Brits have a lot more ease in, in handling this. So I can kind of not think and just leapfrog my, my huge quantities of supply. I mean, I've got what are going to be dumps under just about every stack there uh, with, you know, the thought of, well, I want to make sure I got enough. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at the possibility of cutting out these English units here, but they all are sitting on dumps and that makes them significantly more defensible. Um, I would have two rounds, one round to attack and one round perhaps to pull back. That is more appealing than uh, you know, than getting stuck out here if if I can't succeed in taking them out. But it looks like a really tough thing to fight to try to take those spaces. I'll look to see uh, just to make sure that I can. Otherwise, I think uh, the Axis is going to pull back to Alagila area, get the uh, the rough terrain here, try to defend that, and try to dispatch some troops. Um, towards Tripoli. Now as we push into the Commonwealth side of this, which is really kind of the last turn before we enter into the Trail of the Fox as well, uh, October here, the Axis have pulled back this Ella Gila line completely. I've got a couple of trucks left behind. Those are going to get overrun, uh, mainly because in trail supply becomes even more important well one can argue one way or another on that so here's the deal according to the north africa campaign game that is what we're playing the rules say elagila stays as a permanent supply source for the axis until it's overrun <laughs> that makes no sense right <laughs> i mean the supplies are coming from tripoli they're not going to be in Increased simply because I hold El Aguila. I want to hold it just for the sake of holding it, to tell you the truth, because I think it's good terrain to hold. But if you add this additional value that it becomes an, uh, uh, an inexhaustible supply source, something the Allies have. Once the Allies overrun it, they get it as such, and their entry hexes A and B here. I don't know where C is. Uh, down there, um, are all considered inexhaustible, as is El Aguila. Basically, the idea being, look, you know, the Allied net is whatever it needs to be to get supplies here. <laughs> you know, they can manage it. And likewise, in, in, in uh, the North African side. So, if you give this additional... Uh, uh, impetus for holding this terrain, it, it sort of doesn't make any sense because the supplies still have to come in through Tripoli. I don't mind that I don't have to deal with that whole process uh, throughout the Desert Fox, but when it comes down to I'm playing on the Trail of the Fox map, I feel like I should use the Trail of the Fox rules uh, for the game and not this weird little tack on to try to make the campaign work better. And because of that, what I'm saying is these dumps are what I need to support this. There's some interspersed in the line too. I think I've got a total of eight dumps to supply those. That's to give them general supply. I certainly can't supply everything with combat supply, but I'll be getting uh, uh, convoy arrival rolls for the next two turns there still. So I still have some opportunity to beef that up. As it is, this looks like an impenetrable line. <laughs> it really does. Um, I'm looking at the only way to take it is head-on assault. 
this has been fortified to level two and the hope is I can bust through because if I can't bust through there I'm shipping decent amounts of forces already up into the Tunisia quadrant. Now the problem of course with that is look the Americans are landing with significant amounts of force. I may decide I can't afford to hold this because I will lose everything back there if I do so. That's a decision I can make. Turn two is when these forces flee. Uh, I should have a pretty good feel by that point what I'm facing, uh, especially after I set up the reinforcements track, which I've neglected to do in part because I don't think the Axis should be aware of just what they're gonna be facing until it lands. Once it lands, they should have a pretty good idea of what the uh, uh, the order is going to be there. So I don't want to expend, you know, I built this to level two fortification, but I didn't build any additional fortifications because I don't want to expend my supply dumps. These become really, really valuable commodities. They always are for the Axis in both games, but uh, if I was allowed to keep this as a, an unlimited source, well, if I could put a boot plug here and prevent the Commonwealth troops from making it across, then, you know, half the battle's won, right? And a bunch of fortresses there would do a good deal towards that. Anyway, that's not something I feel like allowing. I'm on to the Commonwealth turn. That's going to be the last turn, uh, last part of the, this video. Because before I go onward with the game after that, I'm going to do a rules explanation of the differences for Trail of the Fox. And then I'll probably start posting these over on Trail of the Fox because that's what this game becomes more about. Um, in particular, you know, this is this was decided long ago. We could have quit if we were just playing Desert Fox. Pretty much once the Tobruk, um, once that became static and that, that salient. Because then it just really becomes, okay, when do the Germans withdraw? Uh, they, they don't have a chance of, of, of winning the game. It felt to me like a minor loss on their part, just in terms of they, didn't, they did significantly worse than they, they did historically. While the Germans don't know what's coming, presumably, Allied High Command sure the hell should have some idea. So I've set this up because this is the last turn before things start flowing in. And this is our initial invasion force. We get some uh, special units that start the game set up on the board at Bone, up there, in Algeria, and then some additional forces come in. I'm still not sure what the disposition of the French is. I, I know that, uh, I think they end up all allied or surrendering. Um, but I'm not 100% positive of that, so there's some possibility that the Vichy French, uh, at least in my mind, might be supporting the Germans. I, I think that's highly unlikely, but uh, I know some games allow for that. And anyway, in my planning at this point, I'm not pursuing to make sure that I understand one way or another until um, until I'm ready to play Trail of the Fox because I want some level of surprise there. Anyway, if you look at the, what's due to come in, these are the kind of brownish units are the Germans, slightly different colorings everywhere, whereas the grays are U.S. units, which look kind of Axis as well. Um, it's not a huge amount of forces coming in. A big part of the hammer is this. So if I can hold that off here and divert some small portion, maybe more, of what I've got holding the Elagila line, I think that I can do well enough in Tunisia without giving up this terrain. Now the problem, of course, is if it comes down to I'm defending Tripoli, which would be a weird situation. Uh, if I've gotten pushed back out of Tunisia to Tripoli, I've got to pull these back, and that can cause some real problems. So, you know, if, if I start getting pushed to this direction on the map, I've got to worry very much uh, about my situation. But what I hope to do is, different from the historical, try to hold the Brits off down here. 
honestly, I don't know how much that situation, you know, how defensible or how immobile the terrain down here would make a, a British extension. Because obviously the Brits have more troops and they could extend their line further down. Uh, where we saw that happen in this game over here, the Germans had to pull back from it. They couldn't hold up against that more extended positioning. But a weak force can hold a bottleneck, like El Alamein, or in this case, like this, because of the edge of the map, for a significant amount of time. That may just be a flaw in uh, the design of the campaign. It may be uh, a factor of, well, you shouldn't, you know, have been able to hold this. There's a reason Rommel ran away uh, and uh, left Libya. But there doesn't seem to be such a reason in the game. I find that to be a problem if the Brits can't punch their way through this. If they can, they'll probably do enough damage uh, that it's worth worthwhile. And then, you know, there's another defensive line here, and then lines at each riverside. Uh, this is... I, I, I'm viewing the, the retreat as being... Uh, a very powerful tool to holding on to Tripoli at the very least. Uh, I don't know if there are any other, I don't think there's anything else kicking around down here. Tripoli is the next stop in the line. One problem with the uh, with the counters, they have a, a, a number on them and the Germans all come in depleted. They have a number on them indicating the turn they come in, which is standard what's used in the in the desert box as well. But the units that aren't on the map are these guys. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, but they have sort of a circle around the number of the turn. Now that's not, I couldn't find that in the rolls, but there's one distinguishing factor between, you know, the, the counters. It's not here that I could find. I'm looking and I don't see it. Uh, I couldn't find it anywhere on the map, and I couldn't find it in the reinforcement rules. The only thing that I found having to do with it was here they talk about deployment. But then, you know, if I look up in the glossary, deployment's not under glossary. I don't know. Entry hex is, but it doesn't discuss which, where the counter comes in. And maybe... Here we go. Allied reinforcements with a white dot under the number. Enter at El Aguila. Well, nothing has that. <laughs> but I guess that's that circle. Everything else is gonna enter from Algeria. Uh, apparently a choice of the player. A Axis reinforcements enter at entry points unless they have the deployment on the, uh, if they have the deployment on the back, they go past. And they don't seem to indicate anything about German units coming in from El Aguila. <laughs> Maybe they set up on the board, but I don't think so. I think they're these guys here with that same circle on them. So, I don't know. I feel like Maybe the map was intended to be larger or something at one point, and then it got cut down to this something that would fit in the in the magazine edition, which you had to cut apart and put together, as you can see. And at the end of October, going into November, this is the last part of this video, and I'm going to go to the rules differences on the Trail of Fox, which I still have to read up on. Uh, the Brits launched one attack down here in the corner. It was successful. They had four to one odds. Basically, uh, the Axis left a defect in their line. They could have pushed down further or something, but uh, their line's getting turned now because of a stupid mistake. Uh, however, the Brits got a terrible die roll, and the attack from here meant only a tiny stack here could support it. So it was only some eight strength points in supply and everything. Um, the Axis couldn't really hold the Hex uh, without being destroyed completely. As it was, they took uh, 
one of them big infantry divisions knocked out. Which is a shame because they actually do serve some purpose on defense. Um, but that was actually the choice of the Brits to finish that off. They got a partial hit, which they took against that instead of the thing that generated it, which was this artillery piece. However, the entire Allied force has been uh, damaged, and it was all disrupted. I lost a dump for that. I've still got to go through and fix uh, my dumps, make my front line dumps dumps, make the back line stuff trucks. Obviously, I have a lot more supplies than I need for this situation, but, you know, I want to set up a, mat, a mesh and figure out what, what I absolutely need there. If need be, I'll make some more counters for the combined game. Uh, that is indeed the case. Built myself one more unit, and one thing to look forward to, I had another withdrawal, taking a couple of units out in place of one of these, and... That's something you don't have to worry about when you get to Tunisia. Uh, the Commonwealth, their troops stay on the board from then on. Uh, there is something of uh, one more factor I'm not sure, I don't think it's covered in the rules, which is, hey, I got a lot of refit points and air points. Uh, in particular, the air points strike me as likely to be an issue. The refits, I can just figure, you know, the assumption may be that both sides used all their refit points in the historical campaign. And whatever I get over here, I can just add on. The air points feels a little less uh, applicable that way. I have a lot of air points left over here. And usually there aren't that many in the game. Um, for that matter, the Axis has a decent number of refit points. But chances are this scenario took into account the air power that was already committed uh, to the war in the Western Desert, Eastern Desert, uh, before, that doesn't make sense, before they, uh, and then added add some in according to Trail of the Fox. Uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of little uh, rough edges to combining these two games. And that's just one of them. I don't think it's at all the worst by any means. All right, this one's going up. And from now on, maybe look to Trail of the Fox to see if the videos end up getting posted there. Because I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, when I start with the rules there, I'll, I'll just start doing it. I may even put another entry on my Geeks list. Like I did with uh, uh, Seven Days, Gaines Mill, Seven Pines, Melbourne Hill. Um, I split them up according to, because basically the fighting was all happening on one of the three games at any given time. There might be some external stuff, but for the most part, they, they did follow. And this very clearly... You know, we've shifted. We're no longer playing the Desert Fox anymore. <laughs> That's clear. Whether or not we're playing Trail of the Fox is pretty iffy. Uh, you know, I mean, you got to figure the Sand Sea goes down here. Uh, here's an example. I thought this wasn't here, but this is Sand Sea over on the uh, Trail of the Fox game. Again, impassable. All right, up again.